Hello my friends and welcome back to the You Can Do TV channel. In this video, we'll explore the construction process of incredible bridges and tunnel in Turkey and Korea. Besides, we also learn about the process of asphalt production and asphalt road construction. The Nisibi Bridge is a significant construction project located in Adıyaman, Turkey, designed to bridge the gap created by the Nisibi Dam. This project plays a crucial role in connecting regions and improving transportation in the area. The construction process began with excavation work. Approximately 150,000 cubic meters of rock were removed to create the foundations for the massive pylons that would support the bridge. These imposing pylons reached a remarkable height of 96 meters. To ensure their stability and structural integrity, the pylons were reinforced with an impressive 4,200 tons of high-strength concrete and rebar. This reinforcement was a critical measure, given the bridge's location in a region prone to seismic activity. Earthquake resilience. The earthquake resilience of the Nisibi Bridge was a paramount concern, given the area's susceptibility to seismic events. To address this, the bridge was designed and constructed to exhibit elasticity during earthquakes. This engineering approach ensured that the bridge could withstand even significant seismic disturbances, and importantly, it could remain usable immediately following an earthquake. Steel fabrication. Approximately 6,500 tons of steel were integral to the construction of the Nisibi Bridge. These steel components, vital to the bridge's structural integrity, were pre-manufactured in a specialized factory located in Osmaniye. Following this pre-fabrication process, the steel components were carefully transported to the bridge's construction site. Temperature management. Temperature management played a critical role throughout the construction process. The project's engineering team meticulously monitored and managed temperature differences, wind conditions, moisture levels, and even earthquake acceleration to preserve the bridge's structural integrity. Daily temperature variations, which could result in changes as precise as 10 centimeters in the bridge's positioning, were continuously assessed and factored into the construction process. Cable installation. The Nisibi Bridge features a cable stayed design, a structural configuration that involves the installation of numerous cables to provide support and balance. The installation of these cables was a meticulous process that relied on precise engineering and measurements. Maintaining the balance and stability of the bridge was of utmost importance, making the cable installation phase a critical aspect of the project. Segment placement. The stability of the Nisibi Bridge hinged on the careful placement of its segments. To achieve this, 
segments of the bridge were lowered onto specially designed pontoons, which were then used to transport these segments to the installation site. This phase of the project was not without its challenges, particularly concerning the need for deep water to facilitate segment transport. Challenges and solutions. Indeed, the Nisibi bridge construction faced its share of challenges. One of these challenges was the necessity of deep water to enable the safe transport of bridge segments. To overcome this challenge, the project's engineers devised a solution involving the extension of a beam, thereby enhancing its load-bearing capacity. This innovation allowed for the safe transport of heavier loads and expedited the process of reaching deep water. Safety and environmental considerations. Throughout the entire project, an unwavering emphasis was placed on safety and minimizing environmental impacts. The overarching goal was to complete the bridge without accidents and to ensure that the construction process had minimal adverse effects on the environment and human life. The project team's dedication to safety and the environment underscored the project's commitment to responsible and sustainable construction practices. Project completion. After years of dedicated effort and meticulous work, the Nisibi Bridge neared its culmination with the installation of the final key segment. This marked a significant milestone in the project, signifying the successful assembly of all components and the realization of a vital transportation link. This section shows that within 30 hours, a completely new road profile will be created using the innovative compact asphalt installation method, which enables the production of high quality road surfaces in record time. Before installation, milling work begins to remove the old pavement down to a residual height of nine centimeters. A powerful 1000 horsepower cold milling machine efficiently cuts through the layers of old asphalt. The milled material is loaded directly onto waiting trucks at an impressive pace. The loading time per truck is less than three minutes, thanks to a milling depth of 13 centimeters. The logistics chain must be perfectly organized to ensure a smooth process. The control elements of the Workin 250 cold milling machine are easily accessible and user-friendly. The machine features an advanced quick-change holder system to minimize downtime caused by the wear of individual milling tools. As the milling machine operates, the milled material is continuously loaded onto trucks for further processing. This milled asphalt is transported to nearby mixing plants, where it will be crushed, stored, and processed to create a new asphalt mix. The milled material is transported to three nearby mixing plants in Gender Kingen, Ebenhausen, and Augsburg, where it will be processed further. At the Gender Kingen mixing plant, the milled asphalt granulate is crushed to achieve a uniform particle size, dry stored, and processed with the existing bitumen into a highly load bearing asphalt. This plant produces 5,100 tons of base layer mix for the pilot project on the B16. Before the milled material is deposited, each truck is weighed to determine the net weight of the load. The trucks then unload the milled material in front of the storage hall. The preferred method of recycling the material is the production of new asphalt mix because it allows for the reuse of the bitumen binder. It is important to adhere to the specified technical requirements for asphalt granulate regarding particle distribution and binder content. The crushed asphalt granulate is stored in large halls, ensuring up to 12,000 tons of coarse asphalt granulate can be stored for future use. Dry storage is crucial to prevent water ingress and eliminate the need for time-consuming drying, aligning with sustainability and CO2 reduction goals.
After the asphalt granulate is prepared, the section undergoes a meticulous pre-cleaning process to guarantee optimal adhesion of the new compact asphalt. This pre-cleaning step is essential for ensuring a durable and seamless bond between the new and existing asphalt layers. To achieve a thorough cleaning, a high-pressure vacuum sweeper is deployed on the surface. This powerful equipment effectively removes dirt, dust, loose particles, and debris, leaving the underlying pavement clean and free from any contaminants that could compromise the adhesion. Once the surface is cleaned, a bitumen-based adhesive layer is carefully applied. This adhesive serves as a bonding agent, promoting a strong and long-lasting connection between the new and existing asphalt layers. The bitumen-based adhesive possesses excellent adhesive properties and is specifically designed to withstand the rigors of road traffic and environmental conditions. The application of the adhesive layer ensures that the new compact asphalt adheres securely to the underlying pavement, minimizing the risk of delamination or separation. This meticulous process guarantees the integrity and longevity of the road surface, providing a smooth and safe driving experience for motorists. The mix of asphalt consists of aggregates, binder, and additives, with each component playing a crucial role in determining the performance and durability of the asphalt pavement. Approximately 100,000 tons of milled asphalt is transported to nearby mixing plants for further processing. These plants utilize advanced technologies and equipment to carefully crush and mix the milled material with precise proportions. During the material processing stage, the milled asphalt is combined with around 80,000 tons of aggregates, 10,000 tons of binders, and 5,000 tons of additives. The components are meticulously measured and mixed to create a new asphalt mix. The temperature, mixing duration, and component ratios are closely controlled to ensure the desired composition is achieved. Once the asphalt mix is prepared, it is stored in dedicated facilities capable of accommodating approximately 50,000 tons of material. These storage areas are equipped with temperature control systems to maintain the mix at an optimal temperature range of 275 to 325 degrees Fahrenheit, 135 to 163 degrees Celsius. This ensures the workability and performance characteristics of the asphalt mix are preserved until it is ready for transportation and application. Asphalt installation includes the production and application of compact asphalt in two distinct layers an asphalt base layer and a split mastic asphalt wearing course. This innovative method ensures the creation of a high quality road surface that is durable, smooth, and resistant to wear and tear. The first layer in the asphalt installation process is the asphalt base layer. This layer is responsible for providing structural support and stability to the road surface. The asphalt base layer has a thickness of approximately 40 to 60 millimeters. It is composed of a carefully formulated mix of aggregates, binder, and additives. The aggregates used in the asphalt base layer are coarse and have a larger particle size compared to those used in the wearing course. The base layer mix consists of about 95% aggregates, 4% binder, and 1% additives. These proportions are meticulously calculated to achieve the desired strength, stability, and durability of the road.
The binder in the base layer is typically bitumen or asphalt cement, which acts as a binding agent, holding the aggregates together. It provides the necessary cohesion and flexibility to the mix. The binder content in the base layer mix is approximately 4% by volume. Additives are incorporated into the base layer mix at a proportion of around 1%. These additives, such as polymers or chemical modifiers, enhance specific properties of the asphalt mix. They can improve its resistance to cracking, tensile strength, workability, and compaction characteristics. The addition of additives ensures that the base layer meets the required specifications for durability and performance. Once the base layer is in place, the next step in the asphalt installation process is the application of the split mastic asphalt wearing course. This layer serves as the top surface of the road and is responsible for providing a smooth and skid resistant driving surface. The split mastic asphalt wearing course has a thickness of approximately 25 to 40 millimeters. The wearing course mix consists of a finer aggregate size compared to the base layer mix. It usually consists of about 90% aggregates, 8% binder, and 2% additives, according to the document's specifications. The aggregates used in the wearing course are carefully selected to meet the required gradation and friction characteristics, ensuring a safe and comfortable driving experience. The binder in the wearing course is also bitumen or asphalt cement, providing the necessary adhesion and cohesion to the mix. The binder content in the wearing course mix is approximately 8% by volume. The wearing course mix is designed to be durable, resistant to deformation, and capable of withstanding heavy traffic loads. The additives included in the wearing course mix, at a proportion of around 2%, further enhance its performance. These additives may improve the mix's flexibility, resistance to rutting, fatigue resistance, and overall longevity. During the application of the asphalt layers, the innovative method includes advanced equipment and techniques to ensure precise and efficient placement of the asphalt layers. This helps to achieve a uniform thickness and proper compaction resulting in a high-quality road surface. Side sealing involves applying a protective layer along the edges of the road surface to prevent water infiltration and maintain the integrity of the pavement. The side sealing material is typically a specialized bituminous compound or sealant. The purpose of side sealing is to create a barrier that prevents water from seeping into the underlying layers of the road. Water infiltration can lead to the deterioration of the pavement structure over time, causing cracks, potholes, and other forms of damage. By applying a side seal, the road's lifespan is extended, and its overall durability is enhanced. The finishing process includes smoothing the surface using graders and rollers, compacting the asphalt layers with vibratory rollers for increased strength, applying road markings and signage for traffic guidance, grading the shoulders and maintaining ditches for proper drainage, and conducting a final inspection to ensure quality and safety standards are met. This step completes the road construction process, delivering a functional and reliable transportation infrastructure for drivers and pedestrians.
The three-story Grand Istanbul Tunnel, connecting Marmara, Asia, and Europe, is the world's first of its kind and redefines transportation in Istanbul, Turkey. By eliminating the need to cross the Bosphorus twice and saving travel time, it provides a more efficient and comfortable passage through the city. This tunnel has three stories, an unprecedented feat on the global stage, built using cutting-edge technology. With this, traffic loads on bridges are significantly reduced. This incredible project spans the Thames Highway, extending from Umraniye Kamlik to Hostel Junction, a staggering 16,150 meters, facilitating the daily commute of 120,000 vehicles. The Grand Tunnel, coupled with extensive highway and rail systems, signifies Turkey's leap into the future with cutting-edge technology and innovation. This monumental project, set to cost $3.5 billion, will integrate nine active units into the rail system, connecting key districts of Istanbul and ensuring quick access for 1.5 million passengers daily. In the world of engineering and construction, groundbreaking innovations are always a cause for celebration. Toto Costruzioni Generali and Palmieri Group achieved such an engineering feat with the remarkable U-turn of the massive 4,500-ton tunnel boring machine, TBM, known as Martina. This remarkable U-turn was made possible through the ingenious application of hovercraft technology, utilizing the Airmover 3000 lifting and moving system. This innovation not only defied expectations but also set new benchmarks for heavy equipment maneuverability and efficiency. The Airmover 3000 is an innovative system that leverages air cushion motion technology to lift and move heavy and oversized equipment. In the case of the Martina TBM, this technology played a pivotal role in orchestrating the 180-degree U-turn, a task that would have been nearly impossible with conventional methods. The machine's colossal weight, hovering around 4,500 tons, posed a formidable challenge for conventional cranes and moving equipment. However, the Airmover 3000 demonstrated its prowess by not only accomplishing the U-turn but also doing it within a record-breaking time frame. No crane, regardless of its size or capacity, could have handled the task with such efficiency and speed. Traditional techniques would have required months of painstaking work to complete the U-turn maneuver. However, thanks to the Airmover 3000, this massive operation was reduced to just a few days. This reduction in time translates to significant cost savings, minimizes construction disruptions, and underscores the importance of innovation in engineering and construction projects. Paul Mary, the mastermind behind this remarkable application, developed an ingenious system of pneumatic sliding cradles constructed from steel and equipped with air cushions. These cradles played a pivotal role in rotating the gigantic TBM, with its massive diameter exceeding 15.6 meters. The operation involved the coordinated efforts of two trucks and several motor vehicles equipped with drift checking systems, ensuring the utmost safety during the process. The key to the success of this operation was lifting the TBM from its supporting surface and sliding it, nearly frictionless, to its new position, marking the launch of the second tunnel drive. To execute this monumental task, manufacturer engineered 10 cradles, 
designed symmetrically for versatile assembly configurations. This versatility allowed them to move both the TBM and the backup wagons, ensuring the entire U-turn operation was seamlessly executed. The Tunnel Widening Machines TWMS are specialized tunnel enlarging equipment, designed to work without causing disruptions to traffic flow. This system consists of two large moving units, the pre-cutting machine and the segment erector shield, which work in two continuous and alternating phases, namely cutting and segment laying, until the tunnel is completed. The first phase involves the pre-cutting machine, which performs a semicircular cut on the tunnel face. To maintain safety and structural integrity, the cut is promptly filled with a special mortar before demolishing the pre-existing material, including the old tunnel. In the second phase, the segment erector shield precisely positions concrete segments which are later consolidated to form the new tunnel profile. This innovative solution is used primarily for the expansion of a two to four lane highway. The highway authorities deemed it unacceptable to disrupt traffic, making the TWMS the perfect solution. The pre cutting machine featured a cutting blade with a length exceeding eight meters, allowing it to efficiently handle large scale tunneling projects. These two machines are meticulously tailored to meet the unique requirements of each tunnel project and can be operated together or independently. When precast concrete segments are not needed, the pre-cutting machine can function autonomously, with its cutting blade modified using various tools to meet specific project needs. Similarly, the segment erector shield can operate independently during tunnel demolition and excavation phases that follow more traditional methods. This section shows the renovation of the runway at Cologne Bonn Airport. The surface of the 3,815 meter long and 60 meter wide asphalt strip was gradually replaced while maintaining regular flight operations. The runway at Cologne Bonn Airport is one of the largest in Germany, spanning over 3,800 meters in length and 60 meters in width. It covers an area equivalent to 32 football fields. Eight feeders, eight finishers, and 28 rollers work in perfect synchronization with 180 trucks constantly delivering hot asphalt to the construction site. The flow of materials to the site is managed using special software for process optimization, allowing for efficient control of vehicles and the quantities being used. The asphalt mixture used for the airport differs significantly from conventional road asphalt. High strength, skid resistance, and, most importantly, resistance to de-icing agents are critical factors. Therefore, the technicians have optimized the composition of the asphalt binder and surface layer to meet these requirements. Quality control measures include the shake abrasion test to ensure the quality of the sand used and the required adhesion between the aggregate and bitumen. The basalt stone used for the layers is sourced from the Hunerberg quarry, known for its ideal properties. The asphalt for the surface layer comes from the Seelbach quarry, characterized by its excellent skid resistance, frost and weather resistance, and high compressive strength.
Meeting the specific demands of such a project is guaranteed through an optimized system, with a special bitumen for the mixing plants supplied by the gut refinery. Bito Nina, the logistics company of Basalt AG, takes care of transporting the bitumen to the plants. To ensure the required delivery volume of at least 7,500 tons per night over eight weekends, a powerful network of mixing plants including N-Ports, Gross Furnish, Tall Becker, Allen and Dorna is employed. Laboratory technicians continuously monitor the asphalt temperature and take samples for further analysis, prioritizing quality throughout the process. Concrete canvas was chosen as the ideal solution for lining the Bella Vista channel, an irrigation channel located in La Serena, Chile. The project aimed to address water losses and ensure a reliable water supply for the Bella Vista channel water community. The channel, which stretched 2.4 kilometers in length, required a rapid, durable, and environmentally friendly lining. Alternative options, such as HDPE pipes, were considered but proved impractical due to the channel's flow velocity and the need for larger pipes that were not readily available locally. Another costly option would have involved using two parallel pipes. To overcome these challenges, Concrete Canvas GCCM, Geosynthetic Cementitious Composite Mat, was chosen as the preferred solution. The installation team faced the constraint of being able to cut off the water supply for only eight days at a time during the winter months, as shutting off the water for a longer period would harm the community's crops. The installation process began with the removal of rocks and debris from the channel, followed by the excavation and grading of the channel to achieve the desired shape. The soil was replaced with a stabilizing material and compacted using channel forms according to the engineering design. The CC5TM material was delivered to the site in bulk rolls and unrolled across the channel width. The edges were secured in anchor trenches using ground pegs and subsequent layers were overlapped by 100 millimeters. Screws and polyurethane sealant were used to joint the layers and prevent water ingress. To secure the concrete canvas to existing concrete infrastructure, concrete screws were used and sealant was applied along the edges and over the screws to eliminate protrusions and maintain a watertight seal. The installation process involved multiple teams working simultaneously on different sections of the channel. While one team prepared the substrate and re-graded the channel, another team laid the concrete canvas material on the recently completed section. Behind them, another team hydrated the previously installed sections. This coordinated approach allowed for efficient progress and completion within the allotted time frame. A total of 18,000 square meters of CC5TM was installed over a period of 40 days, with the teams working approximately 9 hours each day. The success of the Bella Vista Channel Project led to the specification of concrete canvas for additional projects and other clients have also chosen similar solutions based on this successful installation. The construction of the Korea Honam High-Speed Railway Project, specifically Section 3-3, which involved the Manjong River Bridge, was a remarkable engineering feat that utilized innovative methods and equipment. One such method that played a pivotal role in this project was the precast span method, PSM which significantly contributed to the project's success. The Honam High Speed Railway HSR, is a vital transportation link in South Korea, connecting the cities of Osong and Makba. This railway line is a part of Corail's Korea Train Express KTX, system, designed to enhance high-speed rail services between Seoul and Makba, as well as Seoul and Gwangju, all of which currently rely on the existing conventional Honam line. The Honam HSR aimed to provide faster, more efficient, and modern rail services to meet the growing demands of South Korea's transportation infrastructure.
The PSM, or precast span method, was a key construction technique used in this ambitious project. In this method, box girders of a specific span length, 25 meters, were manufactured in a factory setting. These precast box girders are essential components of bridge construction. The use of precast elements offers several advantages. Quality assurance. Precasting elements in a controlled factory environment allows for rigorous quality control. Each precast segment can be inspected and perfected before it is transported to the construction site. This results in higher quality components and ultimately a safer and more durable structure. Efficiency. Mechanized construction in a factory setting streamlines the production process. It allows for a continuous and efficient workflow, reducing construction delays. Reduced on-site construction time. By manufacturing bridge segments off-site, the actual on-site construction time is significantly reduced. This minimizes the disruption to the surrounding environment and accelerates the overall project timeline. The construction equipment associated with the PSM, including the full span launching method, FSLM, equipment, played a crucial role in the successful execution of this technique. The FSLM equipment was supplied to the project and was a game changer for high speed railway construction in South Korea. The launching gantry is a substantial structure equipped with a powerful crane system, capable of handling the substantial weight and dimensions of the precast segments. This gantry is pivotal in the assembly process, ensuring that each segment is accurately positioned in its designated location. The FSLM method operates on a span-by-span -span basis, meaning that each precast segment is placed and joined to the previous one. This approach allows for incremental progress, reducing construction time and optimizing safety. In some cases, a transporter is used in conjunction with the launching gantry, facilitating the gradual movement of the gantry forward, allowing for the systematic construction of the entire bridge span. The main specifications of the FSLM equipment included a 35-meter span and a remarkable 1,000-ton capacity. This level of capacity is necessary for handling the substantial precast segments used in bridge construction. It allowed for the precise and controlled placement of these segments, ensuring the structural integrity of the bridge. The FSLM equipment consisted of various components, including the 1000T launching gantry, 1000T transporter, and a pair of 500T gantry cranes. These components were supplied to two South Korean contractors. This marked a significant milestone as it was the first time Chinese large-scale bridge building equipment had been used for overseas high-speed railway HSR, projects. In total, more than 10 kilometers of the Honam High-Speed Railway were constructed using the FSLM equipment supplied by SDI. This method not only expedited the construction process but also ensured the structural integrity of the Manjong River Bridge and other sections of the railway.
The successful completion of Section 3-3 of the Honam High Speed Railway project, including the Manjong River Bridge, was a testament to the ingenuity and expertise of the engineers, contractors, and equipment providers involved. The utilization of the precast span method, PSM, and full span launching method, FSLM, equipment allowed for efficient, high quality, and timely construction, contributing to the development of South Korea's high speed rail infrastructure. Canal paver machines are specialized construction equipment used for the precise and efficient laying of concrete or asphalt in the construction of canals, irrigation channels, and other water-related projects. These machines, such as those manufactured by Sana Diamond, are designed to automate and streamline the canal construction process, ensuring accuracy and consistency in the placement of the paving material. The operation of a canal paver machine involves several key components and processes. First, the machine is positioned at the starting point of the canal or channel to be paved. The paver is equipped with an adjustable paving width, allowing it to accommodate various canal dimensions. Once the machine is in position, the paving material, either concrete or asphalt, is loaded into the hopper located at the front of the machine. The material is then conveyed through a series of augers and conveyors, which evenly distribute it onto the canal bed. The paver screed, a flat metal plate, levels and compacts the material to the desired thickness and smoothness. The canal paver machine is equipped with sensors and automatic controls that ensure precise alignment and grade accuracy. These sensors detect the elevation and slope of the canal, and the machine's controls make adjustments in real time to maintain the desired grade and cross-section. This results in a uniform and properly sloped canal, which is crucial for efficient water flow and drainage. Throughout the paving process, the machine moves steadily forward, laying the material and compacting it simultaneously. The operator monitors the operation from a control panel and makes any necessary adjustments to ensure optimal performance. The manufacturing process of the Sigma asphalt plant begins with the company's production facility in Ankara, Turkey. With an 11,000 square meter production area, Sigma produces fully automated asphalt plants that adhere to European environmental regulations and incorporate the latest technology used in Europe. The asphalt plants are designed and manufactured through intense research and development, R&D studies by Italian and Turkish engineers with over 30 years of experience in the field. The production program includes modular asphalt plants, compact asphalt plants, and mobile asphalt plants with hot mix production capacities ranging from 80 to 340 tons per hour. Sigma prioritizes quality and selects critical components from top quality European and American manufacturers, ensuring reliability and high performance. The qualified staff and advanced technical infrastructure contribute to the production process, which complies with European norms and undergoes quality control at every stage. The modular structure of Sigma asphalt plants offers transportation and installation advantages. Designed to fit into standard containers, the plants can be carried more economically and assembled more easily. The manufacturing process of asphalt in the Sigma asphalt plant begins with the handling of aggregates, which include crushed stone, sand, and gravel. These aggregates are stored in hot aggregate bins, which can hold a capacity of 40 to 80 tons. The aggregates are then fed into the drying drum for further processing. Drying. In the drying drum, the aggregates are subjected to heat from the burner. 
The high thermal efficiency and effective usage of heat in the Sigma dryer ensure optimum drying while minimizing fuel consumption. The aggregates are dried to remove any moisture content, ensuring better adhesion with the asphalt binder. Screening. After drying, the aggregates pass through the high performance screen. The screen, with its semi inclined technology, separates the aggregates into different classifications. The linear oscillating motion generated by vibrating motors with adjustable counterweights ensures efficient screening. The screen is equipped with a pneumatically controlled bypass deviator valve and oversized material chute for easy operation and maintenance. Mixing. The dried and screened aggregates are then mixed in the mixer, which is the core component of the Sigma asphalt plant. The mixer ensures the homogenization of the product and determines the quality of the hot mix asphalt produced. With its larger internal dimensions and effective mixing arm design, the Sigma mixer reduces wear and achieves uniform mixing. It utilizes a low-noise, low-maintenance drive system for efficient operation. Weighing and dosage. Accurate weighing of ingredients is crucial in asphalt production. The Sigma asphalt plant is equipped with a weighing system that ensures precise measurement of aggregate, bitumen, and filler. Load cells, rubber anti-vibration mounts, and constrainers contribute to accurate and fast weighing. The fine material discharge gates of the hot silo feature double-stage pistons for precise dosage. The bitumen scale is insulated and gravity fed into the mixer. The filler scale, powered by a screw conveyor, uniformly distributes the weighed filler to all zones inside the mixer, bag filter, and dust collection. To maintain environmental standards and minimize pollution, the Sigma asphalt plant incorporates a bag filter system. The system comprises a pre-separator and filtration sections. The construction of the Northern Marmara Highway, particularly the European part, Kanali Odieri and Habibler Hasdal sections utilized a unique construction method known as the push and drive method, which is also referred to as an incremental launching system. This innovative approach is often colloquially referred to as a moving road. Here is an overview of this construction method and the progress of the Northern Marmara Highway project. The push and drive method involves pouring the deck concrete in segments, creating slices, in a casting area behind an edge foot. Once the concrete has set, these segments are pushed into their final position, forming the road structure. This method is ideal for constructing long viaducts and elevated roadways efficiently and with minimal disruption to the surrounding environment. The push and drive method was applied by Frases Frasinet for the construction of various viaducts on the Northern Marmara motorway, including V17, V6, and V14. Frases Frasinet is a company known for its expertise in innovative construction techniques, and they successfully implemented this method on the project. The Northern Marmara Motorway Project is a significant infrastructure project in Turkey, developed under the Build, Operate, and Transfer bot, model. It covers both European and Asian sections, starting near Istanbul and crossing into Kosoeli and Sakarya provinces. The project involves the construction of a motorway that includes bridges, viaducts, and tunnels, with the Yavuz Sultan Selim Bridge providing a sea crossing. Given the magnitude of the project, it was classified as a Category A project, necessitating a Comprehensive Environmental and Social Impact Assessment ESIA. This assessment aimed to ensure that international environmental and social standards and guidelines were met throughout the project's various phases, including construction and operation. The Eccentric Ripper is a revolutionary hydraulic attachment designed to enhance the productivity and efficiency of excavators in various industries. It works on a simple yet effective principle. 
the accumulation and release of hydraulic energy to deliver powerful impacts to the ground or material being excavated. Its unique design and innovative technology allow for high performance digging and demolition operations with precision and efficiency. At the core of the eccentric rippers operation is the patented impact energy accumulation technology. This technology utilizes a hydraulic accumulator system that stores energy from the carrier machine's hydraulic system during the non-working portion of the cycle. This energy accumulation process ensures that the ripper's impact is concentrated and delivered with maximum force during the working stroke. The eccentric ripper consists of several key components that work together to carry out the excavation process. The ripper body is the main structure, providing stability and support during operation. It is made of anti-wear steel, ensuring durability and resistance to the demanding conditions of excavation work. The piercing tip is another essential component of the eccentric ripper. Made of wear-resistant materials, it allows the ripper to penetrate various types of ground, including rock, concrete, frozen soil, and asphalt. The piercing tip is designed to withstand the high forces and pressures exerted during excavation, ensuring efficient and effective penetration. Two sets of crushing plates are positioned on either side of the ripper body. These crushing plates play a crucial role in the excavation process by exerting pressure on the material being ripped. As the ripper moves through the ground, the crushing plates fracture and pulverize the material, making it easier to remove. The eccentric ripper is attached to a carrier machine, such as an excavator, backhoe, or loader. It utilizes the hydraulic power source and controls of the carrier machine to operate. The ripper's hydraulic system is equipped with advanced features such as pressure relief valves, flow regulators, and overload protection mechanisms to ensure safe and optimal performance. The operator of the carrier machine can adjust various parameters of the ripper's operation, such as impact intensity, frequency, and penetration angle. This allows for precise control and customization of the excavation process based on the specific application and material being excavated. One of the significant advantages of the eccentric ripper is its versatility. It can be equipped with different types of teeth, depending on the specific application. For example, a ripper tooth configuration is suitable for tough rock excavation, while a screening tooth configuration is more appropriate for separating materials. In terms of maintenance, the eccentric ripper requires minimal upkeep. Its robust construction, high-quality materials, and well-engineered components contribute to its durability and longevity. Additionally, the ripper's design minimizes vibrations and noise levels, providing a more comfortable working environment for the operator.